Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, CAF TBM 309 back in action. 42nd Annual IUAC Ultralight Light Sport Symposium announced. Volocopter flies in Tampa. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. CAF TBM 309 back in action. Under the deft touch and in accordance with the fine air sense of CAF Colonel Bill Shepard, the commemorative Air Force's Rocky Mountain Wings Grumman TBM 3309 delighted attendees at the recent Grand Junction Air Show. The Grumman TBF Avenger, specimens manufactured under license by General Motors were registered TBM, is an American World War II-era torpedo bomber developed initially for the United States Navy and Marine Corps, but eventually fielded by several Allied Air and Naval Aviation services. The Avenger entered U.S. service in 1942 and saw its first action during the Battle of Midway, where five of the six machines committed to the fight were lost. Notwithstanding its inauspicious combat debut, the Avenger would go on to be the most effective and widely used torpedo bomber of the Second World War. The CAF Rocky Mountain Wings Avenger was delivered to the U.S. Navy in June of 1945 and did not see combat service in World War II. Rather, the aircraft served with the VT-17 Fishhawks Torpedo Squadron until 1947, then transferred to VT-82 Devil's Advocates Torpedo Squadron before being allocated to the Royal Canadian Navy in 1950 via a Lend-Lease program. During its Canadian tenure, the Avenger performed anti-submarine warfare duty aboard the RCN aircraft carrier HMCS Magnificent. Coming up after the break, storied NASA astronaut Ken Mattingly passes at 87. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. I think it's a very important thing to share the joy and love of flying. Our customers fly to remote places. They use our products to go places that are difficult to get to. Hearts has been an excellent partner for Whip Air, uh, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demands. And it is that shared experience and the joy of flying that brings us all back and charges all of our batteries up. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Storied NASA astronaut Ken Mattingly passes at 87. NASA astronaut and U.S. space program luminary Thomas Kenneth or Ken Mattingly passed away on October 31, 2023 at the age of 87. A U.S. naval aviator, aeronautical engineer, test pilot, and U.S. Navy rear admiral, Mattingly was scheduled to crew the 1970 Apollo 13 mission. Three days prior to launch, however, he was erroneously deemed by NASA flight surgeons to have contracted German measles. Mattingly was replaced by Jack Swigert. Undaunted, Mattingly later served as the command module pilot on the Apollo 16 mission, during which he made 64 lunar orbits, thereby joining an august company of only 24 men who have flown to Earth's moon. AFCON granted STC for B-300 modifications. AFCON Industries has been granted FAA STC SA04581CH, which approves the retrofitting of Textron Aviation's King Air B300 model twin turboprop aircraft with AVCON's nose extension and extra-large whale pod modifications. The two alterations are FAA-approved for simultaneous installation and collectively provide King Air B300 operators with approximately 80 additional cubic feet of cargo space within a fuselage-mounted pod. The space is conducive to the accommodation of sensors, camera, and radar systems with swept volumes of up to 57 inches in diameter. Toronto's Buttonville Municipal Airport YKZ to close. In 2009, the owners of Toronto, Canada's Buttonville Municipal Airport YKZ made public their intentions to sell the airport to a property development concern. In May 2023, the facilities management formally announced Buttonville Municipal Airport would formally close on November 30, 2023, thereby displacing some two to 300 aircraft, operators, and tenants. 
The owners of aircraft remaining at Buttonville near the end of November are apt to incur the cost of third-party trailering. The May announcement, though disappointing, came as little surprise to YKZ operators and tenants. AEM debuts panel mount Bluetooth audio accessory. Anodyne Electronics Manufacturing Corp. has debuted a new panel mount Bluetooth audio accessory, dubbed the BAA-01-001. Subject device is designed to add Bluetooth connectivity to existing avionics, audio, PA, or loudspeaker systems. The device supports discrete phone calls and music audio by way of built-in Bluetooth audio profiles. An integrated front panel LED enunciator displays system power, pairing, and link status. The unit allows operators to easily adjust control and volume of Bluetooth music and call audio playback using the built-in front panel rotary encoder. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. 42nd Annual IUAC Ultralight Light Sports Symposium announced. The Illinois Ultralight Advisory Council, the Illinois Department of Transportation Division of Aeronautics, and the FAA Springfield FISDO are presenting the 42nd Annual IUAC Ultralight Light Sports Symposium. 2024's event will be held in Granite City, Illinois on Saturday, February 25th. Admission is free and pre-registration is not required. Formerly known as the Illinois Ultralight and Light Plane Safety Seminar, the event has been rebranded and relocated. The symposium will cover a broad range of subjects. In addition to informative guided discussions, 2024's IUAC Ultralight Light Sport Symposium will feature ultralight, engine manufacturer, and accessory displays representing UL, sport, and recreational type aircraft. For over 40 years, thousands of pilots, aircraft owners, and sport aviation enthusiasts have attended the day-long safety symposiums and lent their attention to expert speakers expounding upon all aspects of recreational flying. The IUAC is an all-volunteer organization dedicated to promoting safe recreational flying. Speakers appearing at the yearly symposium volunteered their time and expertise. All IUAC programs are free. Donations are the organization's sole source of income. And after these messages, Volocopter flies in Tampa. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Volocopter flies in Tampa. Tampa International Airport and Volocopter, the German designer and manufacturer of electric multi-rotor helicopters, have undertaken a comprehensive flight test campaign of a crewed Volocopter 2X. The endeavor marks the first ever flight test of an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft in an operational U.S. large terminal airport, and the first AVTOL test to be conducted in the state of Florida. The flight test campaign consisted of aircraft downwash and outwash testing with the U.S. FAA and aircraft performance testing in local environmental conditions. Invited guests to the event included Florida DOT Secretary Jared Perdue, Mayor of Tampa Jane Castor, and leaders from Congress who are supporting UAM industry growth, regulatory advancement, and acceleration of public acceptance of eVTOLs in the U.S. Stateside, Volocopter announced in September its partnership with the Bristow Group to begin operations of eVTOLs in the near future, with Florida being one of the targeted areas of operation. Since 2018, Volocopter has flown in Las Vegas, Oshkosh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, and Tampa. Continued and visible flight test campaigns in view of the public are crucial steps to building an efficient UAM ecosystem that receives the community's support. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.